Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Yes, by far one of the most interesting games I've ever played. First off, I've never flown a rocket before this, so this is really cool. Thank you for nodding your head there, little guy. Um, <laughs> so yes, if you've never heard of this game, I highly recommend it. It is so much fun. So this is the menu screen, obviously. So let's start game, and then go to... I already have a save. <clears throat> so let's just go to that and I'm gonna make a series out of this so this is episode one so to speak now if you see a rocket in here nope we've got nothing okay so untitled spacecraft so in this episode we are going to cover a few topics and the first of which is building a rocket and the second will be getting into orbit so let's go straight to it so let's uh, show you so, if any of you are experienced players at this, I suggest you watch episode 2 first. Because this is just the boring noob stuff. Well, not boring, but you know what I mean. It's just noob stuff. So anyway, you've got these little tabs up here. This is pods. This is where you store your kerbals. And that's what these little green men are. Yeah, so they live on this little planet called... I think it's called... Yeah, it's called Kerbin. And it's the equivalent of Earth, except smaller. So anyway, these are all the pods and anything associated with that. So this is the one I'm going to use for this demonstration. Then you got propulsion. This is where you get your thrusters and fuel tanks and that sort of thing. And fuel uh, ducts. Then you got control. Now this is uh, complicated stuff. It just helps you control your aircraft better, like tilting it and all that sort of thing. And structure, as you would expect, just puts things together. You got the decouplers. Those are very important. Then you got aerodynamics, which is for wings. Mostly, it kind of links in with control a little bit. I think they might combine those. I think it'd be smart to, at least. Then you got utility. This is your uh, miscellaneous things like solar panels and landing gear and <laughs> all of it, like wheels and lights and all these really cool things like parachutes. Actually, speaking of parachutes, let's put that on there. Even though it's not going to do anything because we're not landing on Kerbin whatever because there's no atmosphere on uh, anywhere we're gonna be going so anyway then you got science and I have no idea what any of these do so I'm not even gonna bother so anyway <laughs> this is how I'm gonna build my rocket this is our cockpit you click you left click to hold it now you only you don't have to hold it you can just click in and you carry it around so you can carry it and then use the scroll and the mouse to go up and down I suggest you move it up a little bit because we're gonna need some space and this is the there's two buildings when you start out. One of them's an aircraft hangar, and this building here is the ship building. Don't go to the aircraft hangar, because then everything's sideways and it won't work. Anyway, so now that I give you a brief overview, let's start building. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to structural and then get this thing called a decoupler. Now what this does is it creates a miniature explosion that knocks off anything underneath it. So for whatever reason if we wanted to just have our aircraft here then we could hit the button for the decoupler and then boom the bottom anything under that's gone now as you can see here there's little icons and that's stage zero which is like the last stage it counts down basically and that's the parachute right there so this is the order in which you'll be going through your stages now that little icon there is for detaching now that's what the decouplers are so just keep that in mind so anyway, let's go to control. Don't ask any questions, but the advanced SAS module, you will see later on how important that is. But yeah, anyway. So then we're gonna need a fuel tank. So let's just get one of these. And you don't want to get like really ridiculously like different size things like that, cause that doesn't really work properly. And if you wanna get rid of something, you can just hold it and press delete and it's gone. So anyway, for the final stage, I suggest we use a small tank and a small thruster. Now that's one stage. So how about we put another decoupler so that we can separate it. Now you know rockets how they work right? You've got the first thing then it drops a dead weight once it runs out of fuel and that sort of thing. So then you got that. Now let's put a semi bigger fuel tank. How about... where is it? I do not see where it is. Hmm. <laughs> I always get lost trying to find it, some of these. Uh, there it is. You get this one. Now what I like to do is take a big fuel tank, 
put a little fuel tank under it, put one of these, and then get another decoupler. I know I'm going really fast, but we want a decent rocket here. So, <coughs> one more stage, and then we can create our little example rocket that I will be going into orbit with. Now, what this is, is a tricoupler. Now, this is... <laughs> basically turns one into three so you put it down oh and this lets me suggest the next feature or suggest I meant explain if you look here this is symmetry mode now this is it's in single mode right now which means when you plop something down it only goes once like if I were to put uh, this I put it down once if you can look there now if I were to click on the symmetry thing let's say three then it does this it puts three of them down now that's especially useful when you have situations like this because then all you do is you take your big thruster plop it down and boom all three of them are placed really quick and easy as you can see here and there you go that's really that now when you have the tri couplers like this these little things as you can imagine when the boosters are going off they're not attached in any way down here so they're gonna be wobbling around and scary stuff could potentially crash your aircraft so under structural what you're gonna want to do is take this thingy a strut connector go near the bottom and then click on the first spot then the second spot and as you can see it connects and since I'm in symmetry mode it did it three times all the way around so that's that now the SAS module back to up here what that does is it helps maintain your angle like it's hard to explain. It's like the angle in which you're tilting yourself. So that's how you get in an orbit. That's how you turn it. Like all those not so important. No. Um, yeah, important things. So then what we're going to need is some wings. Now, all this stuff automatically at, like attaches itself. So I can add the SAS module here and put wings here. And the SAS module will actually tell the wings what to do to keep this thing where it should be. So let's put on some winglets. How about these? I don't know. Yeah, let's put some of those. How about four? Yeah, don't put them on the decoupler spots because right underneath there, inside there is a thruster. We don't want that. Put it on a solid location like right there, maybe in between the fuel cans or something. And there you go. Now we've got a simple rocket. Now, really quick, <laughs> one little thing I want to do is let's go under utility and uh, what was it? There was some... Let's put this landing... Blah. <laughs> that was bad. My uh, voice just went... <laughs> but let's get some landing gear. Put it down. And basically, once we land, we press a button, then those things go down. And that was some obnoxious background noise. Okay. So now that we've built our rocket, right? What we're going to want to do is name it something. Let's just do, name it YouTube. I cannot spell. There we go. YouTube. And then type, or not type, but click save. And it saves instantly. You don't even, it, there's no loading screen. It's cool. <laughs> so then let's go to launch. Boop. We've got a little loading screen. <laughs> now this rocket only holds one person, like one little green man. But <laughs> certain modules or pods or whatever you want to call them, they can hold more than one, like three. So, what I just did there, if you saw that little thing on the left, there's a lot going on here. I know the screen's a little busy right now. But if you look to our left, there's all the stages listed nice and evenly for us. So, if you can see my mouse, which I'm not sure if you can, but <laughs> if, you, <coughs> if you can look under the sixth stage, you'll see when I hover the mouse over that, it lights up the thrusters. So, when I activate that first stage, the thrusters go off. Then when I press the space bar again, it detaches right where that decoupler is, if you see that lit up. Then it activates the next engine, then it detaches, then the next, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, yeah, lots and lots of talking. Um, so some basic controls is if you can look here at this little globe thingy, don't pay attention to the globe thing right away because it's a little complicated. It's... Uh, yeah, it's complicated. Just don't pay attention to the spear for now. But if you look at the counter to the left, or not the counter, the meter to the left, you will see this little thing. Now, if I hold shift, you'll see the arrow goes up a little bit. And now, that's the throttle. So, 
when you have it all the way up like that, it will go extremely fast. When you have it like down here, it slightly goes a little bit. <coughs> and yeah, that's really that. That's the thrust. And to make it go down to the bottom again, you press X and it kills the engines. So yeah, lots and lots of info. But let's get flying. So put the thrust all the way up. Press T to activate the SAS module. Now that basically makes it so we maintain the same angle. So as you can see, the SAS lights up, and we press space bar to start. So here we go. And there we go. We have a successful launch. And as you can see, we are not tilting at all because of the wings down there. You can see them moving because the SAS module up here is telling them to move so that it keeps itself nice and sturdy. And if you look down here, we have the connector struts keeping everything nice and uh, connected down there. And yeah, we're up at 2,000 meters. Now, if we're talking orbit here, if we want to go into orbit, we're going to need to get to around 20,000. So yeah, let's get up there. All right, we just reached 12,000, which is awesome. And I just got Skype message. Yeah, so anyway, we are almost out of fuel. Now, what that means, if you look on the left, you'll see it right there. And it says what engines running out of fuel, whatever. So now, once that bar runs out, you press the space bar to get rid of it. So if you look, now it's out of fuel. Press space, boom, detached it. Now, as you can see, we are in orbit, or at least at the height to go into orbit. So now let's press T. And the controls for tilting this thing is WASD. So I'm going to hold down D. To move myself to the right, now this is the perfect orbit. You can go left or right, but as long as you stay lined up with this line here. Which is hard to do with heavy rockets, by the way. But this is a very light one, so it is extremely easy to do that. So and then just line it up with this white line right here in between the blue and orange. And then press T. And then the SAS module will keep it there and prevent it from moving. Now, we press space again, and boom! thrusts out nice and uh yeah awesome now <laughs> i don't know what else to say we're at 40,000 meters right now but ooh, burp but yeah we are in space space and there's a moon we're gonna be landing there episode two but you'll see that later but this <laughs> look at <laughs> this guy's going nuts now you can actually go into his view right now so this is what it looks like inside the cockpit like i'm um, at his first person perspective yeah there's his little mittens and his boots and then you press C and then you're back out again so now this is gonna show off another game mechanic I know I'm like bombarding you with information but if you click M or not click I meant press M on the keyboard it brings up this which is a nice little graph now you can see these little spheres these white ones don't pay attention to that that's some other flights I've been doing but what we're focused on is that blue line right there. See how it's slightly getting bigger? Just imagine that as a circle. Now that's our orbit. So what we're doing, essentially, is giving ourselves some sideways velocity to counteract the gravity that we will be experiencing. Now we're going down a little bit, so how about we adjust the angle so we're going up while we're creating our orbit, just so we can not fall, because that would suck. There we go. Okay, we should start going up again momentarily. But, yeah. Oh my gosh, we're burning up. That is not intended. Well, yeah, actually, let's just go up a lot more. Oh my gosh. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little tricky to get an orbit going, but you'll get it eventually. So, now you can see that circle is getting a bit bigger. <coughs> yeah, so, right now it's not doing anything because I am currently falling. Yeah, um, go back. Oh, oh my gosh. Kill the engines. Kill the engines. Oh, no. Okay, technical difficulties. As you can see, I accidentally pressed the space bar twice, and now we have no rockets. Uh. Okay, after our technical difficulties, I've relaunched, and yeah, um, <laughs> that was a fail. So... My error there was that I didn't go high enough. Either that or I wasn't paying much attention. So anyway, let's go to around 50,000 meters. There we go. 
And actually, one thing to note is while I'm adjusting this, look at the speed there, that little number right on top of the sphere or the globe. It says orbit, which is, it says we're in orbit, obviously. And it'll tell you whether you landed on the surface or that whatever. And it shows our speed. And right now we're going at 1,100 or 1,200, oh, 1,300 meters per second. Yeah, it's going up pretty fast. Oh, yeah. And oh, I'm trying to get this orbit going. Uh, it's a little annoying if you go off. And good, trusty. So if you, another thing is Q and E makes it go like this, like twisting sideways. Now, you're probably wondering, what are those little yellow spherical things? Now, the one that is hollow on the inside, that is what you would want to do to get away from a planet. Or is that, no, I'm wrong. That's the one to go towards the planet. Now, the one with the things in the middle, or what? Which one is it? I don't know. If I were to move there. Oh, okay, we're out of fuel. Um, we're almost in orbit, actually. Trying to explain all this at the same time is like ridiculous. Okay, once you go to the last stage, you lose a little bit of control. Oh, never mind. I'm good. But yeah, um, I'm trying to. One of them, there's two of those yellow things on opposite sides of the globe. I don't remember which one, but one of them is to go towards the planet that you're closest to, or, and one of them is to go away from it. I'm not sure which is which, though, so don't quote me on that. But if you look here, we're boosting off in a random direction. Well, not in a random direction, but as you can see, the circle is now getting bigger. And if you wait a few seconds, the two ends should meet up, and we'll have ourselves a nice little orbit. Now, let's just get this a bit more towards that side. There we go. That's going to make that process a bit quicker. Yeah, look at this. So you got the two ends. And... Wait for it. And they're meeting up. And boom. Now, if you look, we've got a complete orbit, which is extremely off balance. Uh, here, let's fix that a little bit. Well, all we got to do is move it into this orange region a little bit. And you will see it's still doing the same thing, but it's slightly bigger on this side now than it was before. Now, <laughs> we could actually get to the moon doing that. All right, let's kill the engines, pressing X. Boom. Off goes the engine. And the game auto-saved. Convenient. Now, as you can see here, it goes around and around, and we almost go into the moon's orbit, which is actually quite interesting. Now, to end off the episode, if possible, I think it'd be fun to crash on the moon. So, how about we do that? So, let's just keep going a little bit here. To create that moon parapsis. Oh, that's too much. Okay, yeah, and what a parapsis is is basically like going around it. That sort of thing. Okay, so now we set up an orbit. Now, this little thing up here comes into handy. So, what we do is we press on the thing. Now, it's three times faster, or actually ten times faster. Then that's a hundred times faster. As you can see, we are now flying away from the Earth. And you can see it sped up on this thing, too. If I go really fast, you'll see woo really fast I might actually be able to meet up with the moon I don't know whoa <laughs> I might actually be able to do this I don't know let's see what we can do here um this is gonna be scary actually I'm not sure what's gonna happen will we come into uh oh uh oh are we coming into contact with them nope the the moon escaped us well that's it for this episode, guys. We have successfully gotten a rocket into a very odd orbit. And if we back up a little bit, we can speed this process up a little bit. Kind of cool looking. Woo! <laughs> Alright, so leave a like down below if you enjoy the game and if this video helped you at all. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.